Hello, creating and using a date table is fundamental to good date basis analysis in our data model. It's almost the first thing that we do. It allows us to do all sorts of date based calculations and time intelligence calculations. It also allows us to reproduce and improve upon that auto date time functionality that I showed in the previous video. In this video, I'm going to show what a well-designed date table looks like. In future videos, we'll show how we connect them up to all the other tables in our data model and the various patterns that we can do there. But here, we're going to look at one. Here's an example of a date table. I built it in Excel, but that doesn't matter. You can build it if you want in SQL, using the query editor in Power BI or using DAX. The tool that you use doesn't matter. What matters is the content and the structure. So let's have a look at that. It really is quite a simple table. What we've got is we've got a row for every date in the date range that we're interested in. There should be no gaps. Even if you're only trading Monday to Friday, you need Saturdays and Sundays in absolutely no gaps at all. The columns that you have are a column for every way you want to group those dates, for example, by month, by quarter, by year, and so on. Let's take an example of a particular date. 1st of April, 2020. We've got the date in our leftmost column. This is a date key. Sometimes data warehouses have the date as an integer representation, and that's what it is, so we can join to those. We can remove that column if we don't need it. Uh, the month is April, the fourth month. It's in Q2 in 2020. It was a Wednesday. The fourth day of the week, one, Sunday being the first day. It's the first day of the month, the 1st of April. It's in 2020 Q2 and in 2020 April. And it's the start of our financial year. My company's financial year, you can see the previous date was the last day of the previous year. For the purposes of this video, I've colored in these columns. So for example, financial year is purple because it's an example of a custom column. It's a column that's interest to me or my company. I could have bank holidays, I could have trading days and so on. It just shows that we can extend the date table to groupings that are of particular interest to us. The blue columns are the columns that we'll see in our field list. I've highlighted month, quarter and year together with date. They would make up the four fields that we'd want to use to recreate our auto date time. But notice that we've got weekday as well and we've got day of the month, two fields that weren't in our auto date time. And these two columns here are if we want to have a single column on our date axis, not, not we can have a year and a quarter hierarchy, but we could have it as a single column. They're useful sometimes. These gray columns, the key columns, are not going to appear in our final model, but we need them to order the corresponding uh, columns. So if we have a look at weekday key, that goes from one on Sunday to seven on Saturday. If, and we're going to use that to order our weekday. Otherwise, the Power BI would show our weekday in alphabetical order rather than chronological order. If you want to get started using a date table, the easiest way is perhaps to download this file here. I, if, you, if you look in the comments below, there's a link and you can go, go and download the file and then simply adapt it. Our next step is to load this data into the Power BI Query Editor to put the final touches. We want to order some columns, we want to hide some other columns, we want to create some hierarchies, and then we want to take our date table out for a spin and test it. Let's load our date table. And we'll call it calendar. And there's one thing that we have to do. One of the columns year and month Power BI Query Editor has decided it's a date. We, it's actually, we want it as a, as a text data type. And the other thing that we'll do is we'll come along and we'll remove this column date key. We don't really need it. So now I'm just going to go and close and apply and bring the data in. Now let's create a couple of measures that we can use to put on our visuals so that we can build some charts to test out our date table. The first one is simply going to be the number of days in the calendar. Here we are and what I'll do is I'll put that on a visual on a bar chart and I'll do it by year and quarter and I'll make sure that that is all sorted by the year and quarter and sorted ascending. Not very interesting visuals simply because most quarters have exactly the same 
number of days. So what we're going to do is more interesting visual that creates a random value. Let's do that. I'm going to create a new measure called random amount and I'm going to use the rand between function which takes a couple of arguments, two integers and it will return a random value between those. And, and here it is. If I were to show this on a table against a date, what you'll see is that every date is just producing a random number. And we can use that now here rather than the number of days to create a more interesting visualization. The random amount is just being used as where the, the data from the fact table would be. But what I want to do is concentrate on the uh, date table at the moment, so I'm not bringing the fact table. Now let's plot that random amount against weekday. And we'll order this chart, so ascending and by weekday. And what we can see is that we go from Friday to Wednesday. That's not chronological order, that's alphabetical order. And Power BI is just knows that, that this weekday is a text column. It's sorting it alphabetically. Let's fix that by making sure that our day of week column, our weekday column, is sorted actually by this weekday column. This is the column that's one for Sunday, seven through Saturday. And the best way to do that is I'm in the modeling pane now. I'll come to weekday click on advanced and sort it by weekday key and when I go back to look at the visual we can see now it's Sunday through Saturday in the same way we'd have exactly the same issue with our month we're going to come along and sort our month by our month key we're going to sort our year and month by a year and month key and now we've used those keys, what we can do is we can hide them. So I'll go to the free key fields and I will just hide them here. We don't need to see them in our field list because we're never ever going to take those and put them on a visual. Finally, let's create a hierarchy just like the auto date time hierarchy. So I've clicked on year and clicked on create hierarchy. We've got something called year hierarchy here, which I'm going to rename to calendar hierarchy. And I'm going to add, when it's there, calendar hierarchy, I'm going to come along and I'm going to add the year, the quarter, the month, and the date. And I'll apply those level changes. And we can see now that we have a calendar hierarchy here. Let's test it out. Again, we'll put our random amount. This time we'll put our calendar hierarchy there. And what we'll do is we'll use the drill buttons to see that we can drill down. One final tiny improvement, we can see that columns like day of month and year, because they're integer columns, they are being summarized by default as sum. In fact, we never want to add up the years or the day of months, so we can change that default summarization. I've selected them here in the modeling pane and in the advanced, I'm going to go to my summarize by and say none. So now we're done. We built our date table. Obviously in our production date table we'd get rid of this random amount. That's there just to test the date table. And you can see that we can create visuals by day of week, by month, by year and quarter and with hierarchies as well. In our next videos we're going to import our real data, our project data with its start date and its end date. We're going to connect up this date table to those dates on that project table in various ways and produce much more interesting charts. Join us then.